What's going on, y'all, man? It's your boy, Judah Tribe. We are in chapter 20 in the book of Exodus. Um, and the Most High spake all these words, saying, I am Yah, thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage, Egypt is always equated to the house of bondage. Deuteronomy 2868 is a good reference for that. Thou shalt have no other powers before me, no other Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven alone, above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Uh, just take a second right there and think about that, man. Something as simple as that that's in the Ten Commandments, man. We, you know, you rarely even take into consideration. You know what I'm saying? What do you bow down to? You bow down to wooden crosses. You bow down to Buddha. You bow down to statues, graven images, and you don't even you don't even think about it. The Most High said, "Don't make any kind of image to bow down to or worship." And what do you do every day? Think about that, man. Think about it. I mean, that's how religion is formed. Mostly through images and things that we see because it's flesh. That's the, that's the kind of things that you do. You bow down to imagery. And he told you specifically, don't bow down to any graven image. Don't make any graven image. Thou should not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yah, thy power, am a jealous Elohim. So he's jealous. So now we have another characteristic of the Most High. He's jealous. This team, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And how do you hate the Most High? You don't obey his statutes and commandments. That's how you hate him. Disobey him and show him mercy unto the thousands of them that love me. See what follows and keep my commandments. So, how do you love the Most High? It's not just through your mouth, it's your actions. Are you keeping the commandments that, he, that, he's, that he's given to you? Thou should not take the name. See, our power has a name. His name isn't God, his name isn't Lord. He has a name. Of Yah, thy power in vain, for Yah would not hold him guiltiness that taketh his name in vain. No as they put a capital N. Don't take the most high's name in vain. If you know his name, then say his name, but don't do it in vain. Do it in prayer. Do it when you're asking him or something. Don't just say it. You know, don't say God. You know, actually, because God and Lord is just it's just generic. It's a generic term. Let's turn this music down. Alright. I'm going to turn it off completely. But don't take his name in vain, man. Never. Remember the Shabbat to keep it holy. Remember the Shabbat to keep it holy. Now, some religion say Sunday is, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why they say Sunday, because it's sun day. It's, it's more sun worship, man. You go through the history, it's always about sun worship. Even through the Egyptians, through the Babylonians, always had to deal with something with the sun. And that's why he said, don't take any image in vain. You don't need the sun. You don't need that. You got imagery of that so-called Jesus with sun and halos behind him and stuff like that. You don't need all that, man. All right. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Six days you labor, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yah thy power. And it thou shalt do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. You are not supposed to do anything. Now, of course, we living in the land being disobedient and stiff neck we're going through curses so some some of us have to work on the Shabbat which is actually Friday sundown to Saturday sundown 
you know, if your if your week is going to begin on Sunday, which is the first day of the week, then how can that be the Shabbat? If your work be, week begins on Sunday, how can that be the Shabbat? It can because that's sun worship. That's why they that's why they made it. They have tricked you to thinking that's your Shabbat. It's sun worship. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in it them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yah blessed the Shabbat and hallowed it. Not only did he bless it, but he hallowed it. You see, you know, some people's like, yo, it don't matter what day you do it. I think it does. I think it does. So if it doesn't matter, why did you choose Sunday of all days? As a matter of fact, these days didn't even have have names. They had first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. You know, if you go and look at the, if you go and look at the um, the origins of the days of the week, you can find that they're pagan as well, named after gods. Just do your own homework on that. You'll see. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land, which Yah thy power giveth thee. Now that's one way to increase your time here on earth. You know, we only got a short amount of time. Sometimes 120 years. You know, you'd be lucky to go past that. But um, we only got a short amount of time here on earth, man. If you want to prolong your days... Sure, you obey the you obey the dietary laws, but you honor your father and mother, man. That doesn't mean that you're gonna agree with them all the time, but you honor them. You don't disrespect them, you know. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all to them, you know. So, honor them, you know. You know, even as you grow, make sure you take. You know, unless you have differences with them, make sure you take some time, you know, just to say hi every now and then, and well, honor them. Don't ever disrespect them. Don't don't go with kids because they, you know, they they raise you up and saying, you know, I know most of his Hebrews are raised on single single family uh, moms and stuff like that. But honor that mother, and if that father wasn't around, then you know, you know, have the same thing to him. He did what he did, and uh, you know, let him be. That, that relationship is tainted; it's broken. There's no honor in him not raising you, so you know, that's that. All right, thou shalt not kill, so thou shalt not murder. You shouldn't be murdering anybody, man. There is a time to kill, no question about that. There is always a time to kill, as you as you can see when we get further on in Exodus. You're going to see there's the time for Hebrews to kill, wipe out all kinds of peoples. But murdering someone, that's totally different. Don't, don't murder anybody. Thou should not commit adultery. Now, in this country I stay in the United States, I think we got like a 60-some percent divorce rate. Most of it is, you know, couples, you know, break up for a lot of reason, but... Most time monetary reasons and most and sometimes adultery, man. This adultery. If you're married, man, you're married. It's it's a it's a sacred thing. It's something that's ordained. It's something that the Most High looks at as being good. So don't, you know, people. You know, I don't get it. You know, if you're married, you're married, man. Work work through it. You know, if you don't like each other anymore, just get a divorce. You know, all that leads to conflict and pain, and don't do it. Thou shalt not steal. I mean, gosh, that's that should be universal. Don't steal. If it's not yours, don't take it. You know what I'm saying? If the Most High delivers something to you into your hands, and that's different. But as far as like stealing something, it's not yours. Don't do it. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Don't lie on your neighbor. You know, don't don't lie on your brother, man. Don't you know? Don't be spreading gossip about anybody. Don't don't do it. You know, you wouldn't want anybody to do that to you. So don't lie on anybody, man. I mean, that's that's self-explanatory. Thou should not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou should not covet thy neighbor's wife, 
nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Don't covet anything, man. Just because he has a flock car or a nice house, a bad wife, and all that stuff, don't covet that stuff, man. Don't do it. You know? Your lifestyle is different from anybody else's, man. Whatever plan the Most High has for you, he'll get it. Because that covetousness leads to other things, man. You'll you'll be willing to try to do anything to try to get what that that neighbor has. So don't covet that. That leads to all kinds of nasty little demons and monsters that that can open up if you're being covetous. It can lead to you being in debt. It can lead to a lot of things. So don't covet things. You know what I'm saying? All right. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Now, you know, Moses explained this the best way that he could. I'm still thinking, you know, like an Independence Day that this, this, this thing that the Most High is in, you know, he's speaking directly to the people. And to Moshe, this is some kind of IFO. It's like a UFO. The, the best way of most can describe it: thunders and lightning. You ever see Independence Day when that thing comes out the cloud? The, the UFO comes out the cloud and the fiery smoke. That's what I'm kind of thinking here, man. You know, and the people were like terrified. And all, and they said unto Moshe, "Speak thou with us, and we was here, but let not the Most High." Speak with us lest we die. The most high press was so frightening. You know, you got all these pastors said they talk talk to God. Oh man. <laughs> this is blasphemy, man. The most high should strike them down in their place, man. They ain't never spoke to no God, man. They'd be scared of they wits if they talk to the most high. They act like it's like a they act like it's just a like a fairy magical thing when they talk to the most high. It's nothing like that. You got the whole congregation of stiff neck Hebrews scared, and you know, that's, that tells me something right there. And it tells me a lot about Moshe because he was all able to, only one able to speak to the Most High directly, face to face. And our people were scared to speak to the Most High. So, any pastor talking about they spoke to God last night or anything like that, man, please. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear not, for the Most High has come to prove you, and that he and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. He said, The Most High is here, he's here for you. I know it, I know it looks scary and everything. He said to prove you. And to actually be in your presence so you don't have to rely on your faith right now to know that he's here. He's here and he's right there in your presence. Maybe a scary sight for you, but he's right there in your presence. All right, to know that you can believe him, you don't have to believe in uh, Osiris and all that stuff, man. All that make believe stuff. It's like he is right here. He can speak. He's living. He's a being. He's right there. And the people stood afar off, and Moshe drew nearer to the thick darkness where the Most High was. The thick darkness, that cloud, the thick darkness is probably like teleporting up there. And Yah said unto Moshe, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Wherever the Most High is, that's where heaven is. That's where he dwells. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. Now this is important because remember the fallen Malachim had came down and presented themselves as gods. And it's just not any, anyone's imagination why these religions were born and they have these uh, characters in them. That's because these fallen Malachim came down and presented themselves in this fashion, in, in this shape. That's why the Most High said, don't bow down to any graven image. Because these Malachim, these fallen Malachim, made themselves to be gods unto this world. And that's what, these, and that's what the humans did. They took this knowledge they ate of this fruit this knowledge that these fallen malachim gave them 
and now they are worshipped as gods on the planet right now an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shall sacrifice there thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings and thy sheep thine oxen in all places where I record my name I will come unto thee and I will bless thee just a simple offering made of the soil of the earth you know the most high he doesn't ask much man you know most of his things seem really simple and if thou wilt make me an altar of stone thou should not build it of human stone for if thou lift up thy tool upon it thou hast polluted it just a little simple tool that you used to make it you know polluted it it's not natural neither shalt thou go up by steps unto my altar that thou nakedness be not discovered thereon your nakedness being discovered this means all your things that you've done you know the most high will make that known unto you if you do that man so don't you know don't do that yo man it's your boy uh, Judah Tribe Y'all's chosen one doing it once again for you um I'll come with you with the next uh, video on the next one, man. And uh hope you guys are going to have a lovely day. Hope you had a good Shabbat. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Shalom.